Rory, say hello to all your fans. Hello, everybody in Waterford. <laughs> <laughs> You're all fabulous. I love you all very much. That's, I'm here promoting that. <laughs> I do love you. I don't just come down and say no, but I'm actually promoting my book. <laughs> Now, as I said, we are joined by on Taoiseach Lee. Oh, sorry, Rory, uh, Rory Cowan. How are you, Rory? I'm wonderful. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. Thank you so much for coming down to us. And oh, thank you so much, much for, for having me. No, I mean that. We're just talking off air about um, the fact of doing the circus. And you get a lot of people that write books and they kind of just presume maybe big-headedly, ah, it'll be grand, it'll sell or whatever. Uh, it's, it's a it. weird one that I don't understand because my background is marketing and PR. I have a H dip in marketing and PR and um, I was the marketing manager for EMI. I ran all Brandon O'Carroll's marketing um, when I was booking with him for years. Yeah. I was with him for 26 years. And I don't under, and with Mrs. Brown's boys, after every show, like you'll see sometimes now people will say there's VIP packages where you pay extra money, you meet the artists and you get, I've, I've no time for that. That is greed. And I would say to anybody, never pay money to meet somebody ever. <laughs> it's greed. It is greed. How much money do you need to make? Yeah. Um, but we used to go out after all the Mrs. Brown shows and meet everybody. Yeah. And uh, like the priest we'd be signing like stuff. Like the going out after mass no, and saying, "We would be signing stuff yeah, yeah, yeah. that we bought, like yeah. programs or T-shirts or yeah. hats." So, but is that person so anyone who wanted to meet us could meet us. Yeah. And I think if you're going to sell something or you're promoting someone, you've got to get out and meet people. You've got, you've got to, get to go out. and see the people you're selling. So many authors I've found out since I this is my first book. Um, probably my only one, but I hope not. But it's probably my first one. And I found out there's so many authors who think that once it's written, it's done. Yeah. And to me, once it's written, that's the start of it. Now you've got to promote Correct. it and sell it. And you've got to get out and meet the people that will buy it. Yeah. And you're going into the book centre. I'm going to the book centre after this. So uh, after that. So if anybody wants to go in there and, and get a signed copy of it, yeah. we have a signed copy to give away now at the present. And uh, we're going to uh, give that away in a little while. Um, I've read the book. I'm not like some people in different organisations to get other people to read the books for them. <laughs> Let's say no, say nothing. Uh, <laughs> a couple of questions. Uh, yeah. Quick fire questions. Mm -hmm. um, your favourite show, your favourite moment for Mrs. Brown's Boys. Have you a favourite? Um, the Mrs. Brown's Boys, my favourite moment was uh, when Mrs. Brown wanted to find out. She knew someone in the family was gay. She initially thought it was herself and Winnie because she'd read a book and said that women are do, do, do things together and that made them gay. And she thought, well, me and, and, me and Winnie play bingo, so we must be, are we lesbians? <laughs> and then she thought it was, she thought it was everybody except Rory. And then when she, when she found out it was Rory, she, had, she got a book and she was giving Rory the book and Rory was delighted that... He was all out in the open now, and he says, oh, thanks very much, and he ran upstairs, and Mrs. Brown says, oh, God, she says, that was a very hard thing to do. I hope Rory never has to go through explaining that to his children. <laughs> like, Mrs. Brown never got it. She never got it. But she just wanted Rory to be happy, and that was good enough for her. And we'll come back to, to that in a minute. Do you remember the, the gonorrhea moment? I do. That's another. There's so yeah. many funny ones there. Have a, have a listen. Jeremy's taking Maria off to Bemis for the weekend. She's going to be going up and down in their gonorrhea. You mean Gorgonzola? You're right, Gorgonzola. It's in the Gorgonzola. It's the gonorrhea that rolls <laughs> Brendan had a way of doing things. He knew on, tell us. he could go in and, like that was totally unscripted. That wasn't rehearsed. We didn't know. I didn't know. I, mean, I was genuinely laughing there. But my ne the next line was in the script, and it worked perfectly because I laughed the the gonorrhea, the gargons all and all that, and I was gone. I was in a heap because I'm not a trained actor, and if something funny happens, and Brendan O'Carroll is the funniest comedian I've ever seen, so when he goes off on one, I have the best seat. I'm right beside Mrs. Brown when it happens. But the very next line, when I'm falling around the place laughing, and the, the, was the line in the script was, Rory, why are you so sad? <laughs> Which meant like it was like a double whammy. I was even gotten worse than after that. But he was great at doing that. Yeah, I interviewed him before I was on Air to the Ground, and I've worked with him on a couple of different things, and there's an infectious thing. People get it in any walk of life. If somebody yeah. starts laughing, you'll start laughing beside yeah. them. There is this infectious thing. Oh, yeah. I do. And on the live broadcast, mm. um, when we went... 
there was one scene that I had to get word, I had to get word perfect. And uh, it was being broadcast to 10 million or 12 million people uh, live. And so there was real pressure on. And I got through it, got everything going. And I was, all I had to do was just get me and Dina were going out the door. And we got to the kitchen door and Mrs. Brown says, Rory, come here a minute. <laughs> oh, no. And I went, oh my God, oh no, what's he doing? Oh no, 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 no. And then he started talking about Mrs. Murphy's cat, but he wasn't <laughs> referring to it as a cat. He was, and I hadn't a clue where he was going from, where he was going with him. So at the end, I just jumped up and ran out the door laughing. I thought, well, you started it, you can finish it. But he would, like, things like that never bothered him. The idea of 10 million people watching, or 12 million people watching this live didn't bother him. Yeah. Cool he did. He knew that this was going to be like he has this thing that he knows what's going to be funny, and when he does it, it is hilarious. Is there any chance you go back to Mr. Brown's voice? No, I've finished not. now. No, I've been like Definitely. when you finish it. Some people are texting in that yeah. already now. Yeah. Right now. I know. No, I finished, and I had a good run. I worked with. Um, I, had, I, had a, I had a very lucky career, a very yeah. lucky life, charmed life really. I was in EMI. I had two employers in forty years. EMI Records and Brendan O'Carroll and Brendan was the longest his was 26 years and EMI for 14 and they were my two employers and I did have a good time with Brendan but I loved working with Mrs Brown's boys um, until we became massive and yeah. then it became a chore for me it became we were doing the same gigs in the same order year after yeah, year after year. And there was that method and there was all that reason that for the yeah. success, but like like boy bands, there yeah. might be a stage possibly in three or four years' time, you just wouldn't know. Would you rule it out completely? I think I would. I I, love, mm. I always think it's manners to wait till you're asked, and I haven't been asked back. <laughs> <laughs> and but I don't think I would. Another I mean, I've done it, and I've moved on. And if I'd stayed in Mrs. Brown's boys, I could have still gone round that circuit. I could have still done it. Yeah. I've been very well <clears> paid for it. Yeah. But since I left, I did two pantos in the Olympia in Dublin. I've written this book, and I'm in Fair City. I would have done none of those things. Are you enjoying life? Mrs. Brown. I'm loving life. Are you loving life it, yeah. is good. Life is very good. Yeah. Yeah, I'm having, I'm having a great time. Yeah, because I'm doing lots of new. This is my first book. I don't know if there's going to be another one, so yeah. that's why I want to get around to meet everybody. Yeah, to, well, to because go to I would hate to think <clears throat> in January if I'd have done that, it might have done better. Or, yeah. or, or, but I want to go out and meet everybody, yeah, and especially absolutely. going to the bookshops. I love that. Yeah, because we used to do that in Mrs. Brown's Boys. We used to go out afterwards and sign for, and we could take up to three hours. You'd meet the people, and so that's what my background is and all the other actors in Mrs. Brown's Boys, that's their background. You mentioned cats earlier on. Yeah. Uh, I was reading in the book about your love of cats. Why cats? I don't know what it is because um, we always had dogs growing up and I was never a dog lover. Yeah. I wouldn't do any harm to a dog but I would never buy a dog. But I had visited, when I moved into the estate that I'm in now uh, in 1990 when I bought my house, um, cats used to come visit me uh, and I'd feed them. And I got to love the cats. And there was one lovely one, Ructions. He was my favourite, but he was knocked down. I was in Israel for the Eurovision earlier on this year. And while I was there, he was knocked down. Um, he was an old cat. He was 18 <coughs> or 19. But then I had, I got, I said to Linda Martin, Linda who won the Eurovision, yeah. um, I said to her, she's involved with animal rights. And after my mother died and uh, I was doing the panto. Your mother died gone. only 2018. Yeah, last year. Um, Tuesday, just gone was her oh, first no. anniversary. And uh, I said to Linda, I'd, I'd, I'd like to get a cat now, I'd like to get a pet. And she says, leave it with me, don't buy one, don't go to a, 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 a breeder, get a rescue one. And I said, okay, that's fine. And she sent me a photograph of two cats. And she says, which one do you like? And I, I liked both of them. And I said, what's the story with them? She said, oh, they're brother and sister. And she gave me the story. She said, they were born under a van in a car park just off Sean McDermott Street in Dublin. And the male cats, you? wild cats, had already eaten two of them oh, by the time the rescue people got them. Another one died soon after the, the rescue people got them, and then two were adopted out, and there was two left. And so I saw the brother and sister. I said, Are they, did they like each other? Because I heard cats don't get on. I just, <laughs> the two of them are inseparable, and I can't, I, can't, I can't separate them now. So I took the two, and I called them Pebbles and Bam Bam, after the, after the babies in the Flintstones. <laughs> Pebbles and Bam Bam. And the name suit them. Bam Bam is him, and he's a real bruiser of a cat. Her Pebbles, the female cat, she's like she's very ladylike. And everything. Like, they're two different personalities, <coughs> but they do get on. They love each other. Stay with us. Your texts are coming in 83 double three double three nine seven five. Mrs. Brown will never be the same without the real Rory. Love that man. Oh, thanks very much. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's not going sick.